Good day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Right, bit of a late one for me. Uh, had a late night, so I haven't been able to get to do this video until now, unfortunately. So I won't take up too much time because obviously I need to get to bed as well. But let's have a look at the market. It has risen just a fraction, it's up half a percent. So 1.58 trillion, I think this got down to 1.56, 1.57 trillion, something like that. So BTC dominance continues to fall a little bit. Volume, kind of nothing really special there. And again, the gas price is still hovering around about a dollar. And that's for basic transactions. You try and do a smart contract transaction on the mainnet, you're still looking at a number of dollars for that. But let's have a look how the market's performing. Bit of a mixed bag. We can see some green, some red. Again, the market's up uh, overall half a percent. So what's been, a, you know, well, not what, let's say, has there been any big movers in the top 100? I'm sure there has, considering that there's been some upside. So there we go. Axie Infinity starting to rise again. Uh, Quant has been doing extremely well. So we've got a couple of good double-digit movers, and then we're just into some sort of single-digit territory movers there. Uh, territory, uh, single-digit, yeah, territory movers. So again, the uh, you know, mid to kind of low single digits, and some will even go down lower. And good Lord, how is that even possible? Safe Moon is somewhere in there amongst all of that. Still sits at the same price, 0.00002. Uh, and you know whether it goes up or down that's what it constantly sits at so yeah who knows but we can see some all right you know some all right gains there what about the losses though any bad losses stacks is down a little bit but they had a little bit of a pump as well this is just the last 24 hours uh, BSV and we got a BSV story coming up that uh, this may have uh, be part of the reason why it's sort of fallen as well you know, a couple of high double digit, sorry, high single digit losses uh, in stacks and uh, content value network. And then after that, we're really into kind of, you know, low single digit losses. So a pretty kind of steady market at the moment. You know, a couple of ups, couple of downs, but nothing too crazy. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart because this is what will really tell us what's happening. Bitcoin is still slowly but surely going down. And like I said, I'm really looking for this kind of mark here. Around that kind of $37,000, $36,000 mark. Is it going to be able to come down here and bounce or hopefully even bounce uh, before we get to there? But this is really the, the line that I'm looking for to let, uh, you know, let me know whether this is that SOS phase in the Wyckoff accumulation or if this was plain and simply just to fake out to get everyone excited before we come back down here and start trading around the low $30,000 range. Look, for me, if that's the case, I don't care. I just continue to buy. I'm an investor. I don't think we're in a bear market. And if this is a bear market where it just keeps chop soaring between 40, sort of 2,000 and, you know, sort of 30,000, I'm happy. I'll just keep buying until it finally starts to go back up. That's the way I roll. Don't get me wrong, if it starts to break down below, particularly, sorry, I should say this $28,000 mark, I probably won't be buying. And I will be a little bit concerned that we're in a bar, a bar <laughs> in a bear market and that I've completely missed it. But again, look, I'm an investor in general. I know eventually it's going to come back up. That's not financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. But I know eventually it will go back up and eventually uh, I will you know, make really good gains. That's just the way it goes. All right, couple of stories. I won't take too long, as I said. So Gary Gensler, I was excited about him becoming the chairman of the SEC for a while, but it seems he is just, you know, sort of old money, old school uh, finance and all the rest of it, and he's not uh, as into crypto as what I thought. So what he said, he has said that he believes... Uh, you know, all IOC, I, ICOs, sorry, IOCs, ICOs uh, are securities. So that's what uh, Jay Clayton said before. So that was his predecessor, and he's basically taking the same kind of stand, uh, uh, stance, saying that he believes they were ICOs. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future with that. And whether that means they're then going to go after basically every coin that's, you know, come out in the last, you know, sort of three, four years, whatever it is. Because they've said Bitcoin's not, they've said Ethereum's not. Uh, I'm pretty sure they said Litecoin uh, is not as well. But outside of them, I think that means they're going to consider every single one of them uh, ICOs. And look, my guess would be 
that if they go that route, it's just a money grab. They're just going to make every single one of these ICOs that come out pay some money, pay some fines. You know, you know, raise the taxes, as they would say, raise the revenue. And then after that, you know, the ones that obviously can afford to pay and are still uh, operating uh, will be fine. And the ones that were just straight up scams, they could uh, find themselves in a bit of trouble because they won't be able to pay those fines. The money's probably already gone and lost. So we'll have to keep an eye out for this and see what happens. But it is slightly concerning. I had high hopes for Gary Gensler and... Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. You know, I, I get the feeling like he's probably getting some pressure from above uh, to kind of make these statements because he seemed fairly crypto friendly initially. But again, who knows? We'll wait and see. All right, this is interesting. So, uh, Partido Popular, oh, hopefully I'm saying that, Partido or Partido, I don't know, Popular, the leading opposition party in Spain has introduced a bill that would allow for the payment of mortgages with cryptocurrencies and create a national crypto asset council to analyze the implications of the use of crypto and blockchain in that country. Now what they're also gonna do is the real estate sector would be able to use crypto to invest in mortgage pools. I think this is the way of the future that Real estate will end up on the blockchain. I think there'll be options where you can buy just bits and pieces of property. There's a lot of people in the world these days and age that just may never be able to buy an actual piece of sort of land themselves, but they may be able to buy you know fragments of bits and pieces here and there that would add up to something similar like owning a, a place that they, and maybe they could sell and actually buy their own place in the future. I think this is very, very interesting and I will be keeping uh, an eye out on this because they were talking about it way back in 2017 that you know real estate would go on the blockchain and you'd be able to buy you know like shares in property and things like that and I do think that is uh, what's coming and again particularly now that we have an, an actual government sort of looking at going down that route it'll be very interesting to see what happens so I'll be keeping my eye out on that right DeFi so I'm very bullish on DeFi and this is you know this just helps me helps assure me that I'm making the right decision now again not all of my picks will be right but I think generally in that space will do pretty well. So Ethereum addresses using DeFi rose by 65% last quarter. Now they say that about a quarter, I think it is, uh, yeah, one quarter of all USDC stable coins is now locked up in DeFi protocols. So that is massive. And what you need to remember is we really are still so, so early. It's just the big early adopters that are starting to get in now. And we still don't even have the full, uh, you know, full, you know, we don't have governments really jumping right in yet. We've got a couple small ones, but we don't have big ones. We don't have all of the, you know, the big industries in yet. They're just slowly dipping their toes and slowly dipping their toes is of the first industries. Again, we're still a long way away from true mass adoption. And that says to me that this space is going to be huge. Now, unfortunately, there's the flip side to the uh, DeFi. So DeFi protocol, Popsicle Finance, you know, who would have thought that this would have happened, was hacked for $25 million. I don't know a whole lot about Popsicle Finance, but this is the first time I've heard of them. So I'm going to say they probably haven't been around for too long. And so this is the danger of investing in these new DeFi projects is we've seen so many hacks. I mean, you know, Thor Rune Chain, uh, Thor Chain, sorry, has been around for a while and even they got hacked twice. Now they're not like been around for a long while, but they're not exactly, you know, brand spanking new two weeks into the space and they got hacked twice. They're still going. So, you know, there's maybe hope that Popsicle Finance, you know, will last as well. But I just get the feeling like a lot of these new DeFi projects that are coming out, not all of them, there is some good ones, you know, diamonds uh, in the rough as they say, but most of them, they're just, you know, sort of freelance uh, you know, computer coders who are just randomly putting stuff together and they aren't really sort of putting too much thought into it or getting, you know, backers to uh, put money into it because there's, you know, nothing really that good about it and the code's obviously not that great. So please beware. All right, talking about Bitcoin uh, SV and how its price was down. So an unidentified group uh, reorganized the Bitcoin SV blockchain, creating three different chains that were mined at the same time. So there was a 51% attack. I don't, you know, believe that Craig Wright uh, is Satoshi Nakamoto himself. I don't think he really had much to do with that at all, if anything. 
uh, and I don't like Bitcoin SV and you know I really do hope it just kind of goes away I don't even think Bitcoin cash will really last don't get me wrong they're gonna be there they can't you know just disappear but I hope they're just you know in the very near future are so far outside of the top 100 that people just don't ever have to kind of look at them and really see them unless they're going you know dumpster diving basically because i don't think bitcoin sv uh, is any good whatsoever and i really don't like the idea of uh bitcoin cash and how that came about either there is one bitcoin and i say we just stick with it but that's probably part of the reason why the price has gone down and i'm you know, even on Bitcoin Cash, for that matter, that used to be two, three, four thousand dollars once upon a time, and now it's literally, you know, worth sort of pennies in comparison to where it was. And I just don't know if it'll ever uh, create those kind of highs again. Could be wrong. Only time will tell, and that's not financial advice. All right. So there was a bill that's been passed uh, in the U.S., and it's not a crypto specific bill but some crypto le legislation was put in there and there's a lot of people who are up in arms about it but it seems like there's also some senators that are on our side and trying to you know address the issues with this bill that's being put forward so several u.s lawmakers have spoken up against the cryptocurrency tax provision in the one trillion dollar infrastructure bill while the bill has been revised from last week's version, the text is still unworkable, according to Senator Pat Toomey. I plan to offer an amendment to fix it. Other lawmakers, including Senator Ron Wyden, uh, Representative Warren Davidson and Representative Ted Budd, have also voiced concerns. So there are people, and you know whether they're crypto advocates or not, uh, we don't really know, but they can obviously see that this bill just, you know, it was put in too fast, you know, it's probably, and it was done by a guy who, you know, never had anything to do with crypto before and there's suspicions that, you know, Janet Yellen uh, and some of her people actually put it together and had him try and pass it through. So, yeah, it's good to see that we're not going to rush into any kind of regulation. I really think the right people uh, from the right sort of background need to get in there and work with it, not people that don't know anything about cryptocurrencies plain and simply don't understand it we do need unfortunately some people from the old traditional finance and that and some of the older heads they need to have a say because whether you like it or not they they've been around for a while and they do know some things unfortunately you know and i don't want to generalize too much but the older generation and, he, and i can put my hand up and say that i fall into this we generally struggle a bit with the newer technologies and things like that like i am not across you know technology like you know the generation of today is I, I i actively try to be better at it all the time but i just don't understand it like i see kids today you know they pick it up it's almost like they're born with an innate uh, knowledge of how to use things and they're you know doing all sorts of stuff that i am just i'm so far off it's not funny and for me to be able to use technology i have to put a lot of effort into it and even still then you know my sort of overall technical skills would be on the lower end in comparison to you know all the kind of tech whiz people that are out there this day and age not at the absolute bottom like i'm not a complete numpty <laughs> i do know how to use technology but yeah nowhere near as much as you know yeah just the younger generation and obviously you know computer professionals and things like that all right venezuela i like this so nicolas maduro president of venezuela stated the country could offer cryptocurrency back loans to agricultural sector in addition to the traditional loans in several fiat currencies so cryptocurrencies are slowly but surely creeping their way in there it's taking a while but yeah I think things are looking positive positive and if there's anyone out there telling you this stuff is going to die and it's going to fade and it's going to go to zero or that you know the regulators are going to come in and crush it don't get caught up in that hype because that's literally what it is it's just hype look at all the things that are happening this is not going to be banned and they're not going to come in and regulate it that hard don't get me wrong there will absolutely be regulation but all the governments around the world are seeing what's happening with their money and you know mainly the US dollar because that's what we're all backed by but even their own money it just they print too much of it and it's this is it's a problem that we've had with every fiat currency they eventually just kind of you know they don't trade to zero like the saying says they don't go to zero but they become worth so you know so much less than what they were once upon a time that they have to then go find another one so the US dollar you know that may kind of go to 
again, not nothing, but just become so sort of worthless in comparison to where it used to be that they just go right out. Well, no one wants that anymore. So now, again, we're going to the, you know, let's just say the New Zealand dollar and they're not going to the New Zealand dollar, but that's what they'll do. Something like that will happen. They all understand that that system is broken. It's going to fail. It cannot last. They are not going to kill cryptocurrencies. They know it's the future. They are just slowing it down for as long as they can so they can get on top of it and in front of it before they then let it run. So don't get caught up in that FUD that it's you know going to be banned and it's going to zero and this and that. That is absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish is what that is. Some will be banned. I've got no doubt there's some cryptos that just won't last. They're going to be regulated out, and I don't know exactly which ones they're going to be. Obviously, Gary Gensler says a lot of them are, you know, unregulated uh, securities and things like that. So some of them will be shut down. Uh, people will be probably put in jail because they did that, collected a whole lot of money, but now have spent all the money and then can't pay the fines and things like that. So we'll have to watch this space, but it's not going anywhere. There's too much going into this all around the world for it to be banned and like, you know, regulated so hard that it basically becomes nothing and like the old system that again, they all know is failing. They've seen it coming for a long time. They've just had no other way out until now. And so they understand that. Last but not least, so Square, uh, Anthony Pompilo, Anthony Pompiliano, sorry, says Square's value could five x thanks to the Afterpay deal. So Afterpay is an Australian company, and it's basically like lay buying, but it's you know not for the individual store. Afterpay is at a whole stack of different stores, and uh, it's basically interest free. I, I, I really like it. I don't use it too much, but I have used it on occasion. But it's basically getting us to a sort of a place where hopefully we won't need credit cards anymore because they are, you know, they're horrendous and they really have been a, a drag. I mean, I've got two of them that I'm always trying to pay off and, you know, eventually at some stage I will have them paid off and I, I hope to never have to use them again. They truly are evil and, you know, unfortunately people want things now and I do understand that and, you know, after pay I think is the way to go. But very interesting that Square, I think they paid $20 billion or something like that for it. I forget exactly what it was, but the two Australian guys uh, that started it, I think they got $2.8 billion of that $20 billion. So, you know, a lot of money to go between those two guys. Uh, and I think they're still staying on and working, or at least one of them I'm sure of is staying on working with Afterpay. But yeah, interesting that Square snapped them up and we'll have to wait and see whether they offer Afterpay for buying crypto and things like that. And, you know, I know Michael Saylor comes out and says, you know, you should, you know, take out, you know, loans to buy more crypto and things like that. I wouldn't advise that to the average user because unfortunately they'll likely do it at the wrong time. They'll do it for too much and they'll do it with the wrong cryptos. If you were ever going to do that, You'd really want to be sticking to something, you know, like Bitcoin or Ethereum. And even I'd be very careful with Ethereum. We still haven't seen ETH 2.0 yet. We don't know if it's going to work. It could fail. So really, Bitcoin, you know, that'd be the only one that if someone was going to, and I do not recommend it, I recommend against it. But if you were going to take out a loan, you'd probably want it to be against Bitcoin and you'd want to do it at the right time when no one else wants to do it. And when you feel like everything's telling you not to do it in a bear market, not everything's telling you not to do it in a bull market, because that actually is the right idea. Don't do it in a bull market. You're going to get hammered. That That's generally the time when it's about to pop uh, and start to go down. But again, I don't recommend doing that at all. I would advise, please do not do that. Taking out loans for investments is a bad idea unless you've got years of experience and things like that in the finance sector and understand how, number one, those kind of loans work. And number two, you know, if you've got some crypto experience and understand how the markets work. But anyway, that's it for me. I won't take up too much more of your time. I do have to get to bed myself. It is late here. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. A little bit of a gain there, but again, any gain's a good gain, so we'll take it. And I'll see you next time.